Back on the show is Brian Camozzi, who's got a fight coming up here on April 15th at RFA 37 against a short notice opponent by the name of Kenneth Glenn. And now, Brian, this kind of feels like deja vu for you and me. We did this, uh, we did an interview a couple weeks ago, and then right after the interview, I find out that you uh, had a new an opponent, a uh, new opponent, I should say. The interview kind of went to waste. Um, how did you find out about the opponent switch up? <laughs> I found out through you. Okay, interesting. So yeah, I was the first person because I had heard from RFA and you know they were asking me about Kamozi or something, and then they said that uh, you you'd got the opponent switched up. Uh, when did your coaches kind of let you know of the news? Uh, right after training. So I was in the middle of training, I guess, when he got the call. Um, so he obviously didn't pull me off the mat for that. So I just kept training, and then uh, you know I grabbed my phone because I was going to plug in the music because I teach class after and saw your uh, saw your uh, text there, and then I asked my coaches like, yeah, they they just called me, so. Damn, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I just, you know, I, I got to report what I hear and stuff. Uh, you were supposed to take on Jordan Larson in this fight. You're not taking on Kenneth Glenn. Uh, has there been much of an adjustment in training, or are you just sort of more focused on what you're, uh, you know, going to be doing in this fight? Yeah, more focused on me. I mean, I think the uh, the biggest adjustment is he's going to be a lefty. Um, looks to be more of a boxer, so a little different. I was expecting Larson to to wrestle a little bit, but um, you know, it's not it's not too big of a change for me. A lot of my training partners are lefties anyway, so all kind of works out. And how often has this happened in your career where opponents uh, switch up? Uh, we often see this, you know, lots of times in the regional circuit. Uh, often enough where I just expect it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I can't, can't worry about too much. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I hear about it, it's just, okay, that's fine. Let me know when they find somebody. Now you're coming off the win over Tyler Milner uh, in your RFA debut at RFA 34. Uh, was that the most satisfying victory of your career so far? Uh, I mean, I think everyone's pretty satisfying, you know, um, but it was definitely, uh, it was good to put on a good showing, especially being the first time on TV and, uh, you know, first fight for RFA. It was, it was nice to get in there and, and get a quick finish and put on a good show. And did you find the reception for this win was a lot bigger than some of your other fights with the fact it was for RFA? Uh, yeah, a little bit, you know, they, uh, they do a really good job of promoting everything and really putting you out there and pumping you up. So that was a little different. Um, it was cool. So, you know, they do a, they do a great job of that. And how'd you celebrate after that win? Uh, I went, I think I ate some bad food and then I went home and went to bed. <laughs> nice. Well, that's good. What what type of bad food do you did you uh, indulge in there? Uh, I went and got uh, some hot wings. Nice. Okay, yeah. good stuff. Nice. Uh, yeah, definitely nice to be able to eat that stuff. Uh, you know, not your body didn't have like a you know, bad effect to it or anything. I know sometimes when guys, you know, they go hard on the diet, it, it's kind of like, you know, their body sort of goes into shock when they have cheap food. No, I was uh, I was okay. I've had that happen though a couple times, man. You go out and you're like, man, this is gonna be great, and then you end up getting sick after, and it's like, well, that sucks. But no, I, I was okay that time. Now uh, you're taking on Kenneth Glenn. How do you think you match up against him? I think I match up pretty well. Um, you know, obviously you never know. We we watched a little bit of video on him. Um, looks to be a pretty good tight boxer. Um, not afraid to go for takedowns. Uh, the height, I think I'm gonna have quite a bit of a reach advantage. Um, but you know, you never know. I mean. We saw he's listed at like five six, I think, but I'm sure that's probably wrong. You know? Well, I was just I was just going to ask you about that. That's what I was uh, nodding my head. I noticed on Tapology they have you listed as six two, and he's five six. I mean, that's a pretty big difference for height, uh, you know, in, in any fight. Yeah, and I mean, I try not to rely on those. I mean, you know how it is. You go to every website, and some dude that's five nine is like six four, or some dude right. that's six six is like five two. You know, you you can never rely on it. So. Yeah, they use, you might use it to throw off people, if anything. It's like, wait a second. It's like, he's not that short, right? right? So, um, but, but you do feel like, I mean, regardless, you know, let's say, it, you know, even if it is a couple inches off, I mean, size should be a factor in this fight, I would think, just with the fact that, you know, even for welterweight, at 6'2", you're a pretty big guy. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it just becomes different styles. You know, a lot of my training partners are, you know, shorter guys, but they're stockier and they just present different problems as opposed to somebody that's long, you know? You mentioned your training partners there. You are at uh, Factory X. Uh, you got a couple guys, uh, you know, got uh, upcoming fights. I know Brian Rogers is going to be fighting uh, at that on that Bellator show coming up here soon. Who are some of the other people you've uh, been working with? Um, Gilbert Smith helped me get my last rounds in the other day, um, which was perfect. You know, he's another lefty, so that was good. Uh, my brother, obviously, he's uh, he's got another fight in the UFC coming up at the end of May. Uh, Dustin Jacoby is getting ready for the uh, the Glory title in May. Uh, we got Josh Kavan, who's just coming off uh, fighting for World Series of Fighting a couple of weeks ago. Um, Marcus Edwards, he's another lefty, so that's been good having him. Um, you know, the usual cast. 
Yeah, the who's who, and those are all really like, top-notch fighters. And I also know James Krause comes down every once in a while and trains yeah. with you guys too. So, uh, again, no shortage on g- good training partners. Um, as far as the, the weight cut goes, how's everything going with that? And uh, I know, like I said, you're a guy who's uh, pretty pretty good on your diet, so I imagine it's not too bad. Yeah, it's going really well. I uh, I paired up with uh, Tyler Mitten for this one uh, from the Melee oh, nice. Way diet. Melee Way. I was going to say, your yep. brother's uh, using him as well too, right? Yeah, yeah. It's been nice. awesome, man. He's got me eating more than I've ever ever done during a weight cut and still feel great and you know the weight's still just steadily coming off so it's uh it's been a lot easier than normal um not that it's ever rough but i'm a lot more comfortable yeah and and as far as i know what tyler likes to do as well is he does sort of that weight management where it's like he gets you on the you know the good diet early on and then you're not doing those extreme cuts heading into the fight if i'm not mistaken yeah yeah i mean everything's just been pretty clean eating healthy you know but still giving you what you need and making sure that you're eating enough you're not starving you're not you know, freaking out because you need food, and yeah, it's it's been uh, it's been a lot easier. I got to get a prediction for this fight. How do you see this one ending on uh, April fifteenth? Uh, usual prediction, man. I'm gonna go in there and look to finish at any point that I can. Awesome. And uh, again, you, you get the win here. Uh, you know, what's sort of your blueprint for uh, 2016? You know, how many more times would you like to fight this year? Um, you know, I was shooting for four to five this year, and I think we're on track for that. So, um, you know, first one. Let's get this one out of the way. Hopefully uh, get in there, get a quick finish, and then we'll wait for RFA and see what they've got for me. And one thing that sort of just dawned on me, you know, uh, you mentioned Gilbert Smith there, your teammate. He's uh, with Bellator now. Does that, is it kind of a bit better knowing that you guys, you know, fight in the same division? I mean, he was the former champ, so it must be nice that you don't have to worry about running into him at all uh, when you're, you're making your ascension up the, up the ladder, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter to me. You know, um, as far as belts and stuff, it's always cool, but it's more about just winning fights. So even if he was still there, it's, hey, get me a fight and let's keep going. RFA 37 goes down April 15th, live on Access TV. Brian, I want to thank you so much for joining me here on the program. And, and of course, doing this again, I really appreciate it. Uh, just remind my oh, audience where they can find you on uh, social media. And uh, give any thank yous or shout-outs. The floor is yours. Yeah, find me on uh, on Twitter or Instagram, just at Brian Camozzi. Um, I want to thank everyone at Factory X, all my training partners, uh, my coach Mark, my brother Chris, Coach Chase, uh, and then all my sponsors. I want to thank Direct Vapor, uh, Valor Bridge, um, Tim Sexton State Farm, uh, Apex Gear, um, don't think I'm forgetting anybody. I think we're good there, but, uh, yeah, I appreciate all you guys.